Looking for one last boost to your studies before the exam? Try our revision package. For just $10, you get 7 days access to our entire ACCA Performance Management exam course. Go through our comprehensive playlist, picking and choosing which concepts you want to cover and which questions you want to practice. Use our filters to revise the most commonly tested and difficult concepts. Go through our question videos for that all-important exam practice. Your choice! Hopefully, it will be the final stimulus that you need to go on to ace the exam. And now, on to our video. Hello everyone, and how are you all doing today? So today we're going to do a practice question from the specimen paper on the ACCA website. And this specimen paper, of course, is for the F5 exam. The question we're going to be doing is question number 31 from the paper, which is for a company called Karadco. And the topic is variances, specifically basic variances planning and operational variances. So the reason we're doing this question is because it has a few tricks here and there that I thought would be useful for us to practice. Furthermore, since this is a specimen paper question, these questions change from oh, a few every few months, every few sittings. So it's good to have this in stock because this question won't be around for much longer. It's not like a past paper question which you can find later on as well. So without any further ado, let's get into the question. And we're going to be doing this on the ACCA website using the ACCA software so that you guys can get a look firsthand on how we should approach a question when doing the soft, uh, using the software itself. So as always, we're going to start with the requirements. Requirement A says calculate the following for the month of November, showing all workings clearly. So there's four marks, two marks and five marks, 11 marks in total. And we need to calculate the sales price and sales volume contribution variances. Then the materials price planning and materials price operational variance. And finally, the labor rate variance and the labor efficiency variance. All of these calculations will be for 11 marks. And just to see what the rest of the question is like, we'll move on to the second part. Part B for nine marks says, explain the reasons why Karadko would be interested in the material price planning variance and the material price operational variance. Now, why is it important for us to look at part B as well? so that we can have an overall gist of what the requirements are. So now when we're doing the calculation for the material price planning and operational variances, we'll look at the details as well, because we know we have a nine mark analysis coming on in part B. Secondly, the most common issue that students face in variance questions is they focus too much on the calculations and not enough on the analysis. So you'll have a lot of students who'll end up spending all of their time performing the 11 mark calculations in part A and leaving very little time for part B, which is nine marks, right? Literally nearly half the marks of the question are in part B. And if part A's calculations are complicated, they are gonna take more time. So you should expect to spend a bit more time there, but do not leave too little time for the analysis because the analysis marks are easier to get and they're quicker to get. And given that there's nine marks there, if you do a good analysis, even if you don't get all the calculations right, you still end up with an overall passing mark from the question. So let's read the question. Keep in mind, we first need to calculate the sales price and sales volume contribution variances. So let's set up our answer before we get into the question. So this is gonna be part A. We'll keep the first column for the labels of the different parts. And because we're gonna be calculating variances, we're gonna be using shorthands to make our answer quick. So let's write these two hands. So we have SPV, which will stand for sales price variance. SVV will stand for sales volume variance. We'll have MPPV, which will be the materials price planning variance. MPOV, which will be the materials price operational variance. Then we have LRV for the 
labor rate variance and LEV for the labor efficiency variance and finally just for our calculations ST can be for standard AT or AC let's put it AT AT for actual and BT for budgeted right so this will make our uh, formula answers easier to write so part one is going to be relating to the sales price variance so we're gonna write the formula SPV and what's the formula for sales price variance is equal to your actual AT units minus your budgeted uh, sorry this is materials price variance not actual units your actual price your actual price minus your standard price multiplied by your actual units right so we have a separate cell for each of these quantities and likewise for the sales volume variance we will have our formula which is the actual units minus the budgeted units multiplied by the they want the sales volume contribution variance so it will be the standard contribution per unit and let's just stretch these out a bit so that our answer looks a bit easier to see right so let's start by going through the question Karad Co is an electronics company which makes two types of television plasma screen TVs and LCD TVs okay so they have two products so we need to calculate the variances for both these products separately and since they want the overall amount as they've indicated the sales price variance meaning the total and the sales volume variance total we need to show the total so what we'll do is we'll move these all one column to the right and we'll mention here so we have plasma and LCD TVs and the same for our sales volume variance okay so it says it operates within a highly competitive market and is constantly under pressure to reduce prices this might be relevant to our analysis later on Radco operates a standard costing system that's why they're asking for the sales volume contribution variance and perform the detailed variance analysis of both products on a monthly basis extract from the management information for the month of November are shown below number of units made and sold 1400 so this relates to note one this is the total number of units we don't know how many relate to plasma and how many re relate to LCD so we first need to find out the split before we can put the numbers in our formula then we have materials price variance and labor variance given for notes two and three those aren't relevant right now so let's go through note one it says the budgeted total sales volume for TVs was 1180 units consisting of an equal mix of plasma and LCD TVs so half of the 1,180 units were supposed to be plasma and half of them were supposed to be LCD. And since these are our budgeted units, we have this part of our formula. So 1,180 divided by two. Remember, all of our formulas need to be in the spreadsheet. You should not be touching the calculator for this. And we can copy this down below. Then it says actual sales volume for plasma TVs was 750 and 650 for LCD. So the actual units was 750 for plasma and 650 for LCD. And since we need the actual units up here as well, we'll key them in once again, 750 and 650. After that, it says standard sales prices are 350 for plasma and 300 for LCD. So the standard price for plasma is 350 and for LCD is 300 and the actual sales prices achieved during November were 330, 
for plasma and 290 for LCD. So 330 for plasma and 290 for LCD. The standard contributions for plasma and LCD TVs are 190 and 180 respectively. So 190 and 180 respectively. So as you see, since we had our formulas down, this was easily accomplished. And now we just need to put our formula in. So we have D13 minus E13 times this. And since our formulas are everything is stacked nicely, we can simply copy paste this all around. So let's just uh, shift this down one cell because we need the total as well. So the total SPV will be the sum of these two amounts. And since this is the answer they're looking for, we'll make this bold. So the total sales price variance is 21,500. And we'll copy this below here. The total sales volume variance is gonna be 41,200 favorable. So that's part one for four marks done. Let's move on to part two, the materials price planning and operational variances. So just like above, uh, again, I, there's two for there's two different uh, products here, so we'll probably need the formula for both of these separately, right? Let's just double check. So material price variance, twenty eight thousand Edwards, no two. Is there any other information apart from the notes? No. Okay. So it says the sole reason, and remember, this is going to be. In part of our analysis in part B as well, so we need to go through this carefully. The sole reason for this variance was an increase in purchase price of one of the key components, X. Each plasma TV made and each LCD TV made requires one unit of component X. Okay, so since the materials price variance is probably just going to relate to component X, that means that we just need to calculate it in one go because it's not going to be separate for each TV in this case since it's the same component being used for both. For which Karad Core standard cost is $60 per unit. Due to shortage of components in the marketplace, the market price went up to 85 and uh, for X and Karad Core actually paid 80. Yeah, so it's just going to be one. So the way we're going to work this out is we have our total material price variance of 28,000. Right, Edwards, they've already given us that. And what was the formula for materials price variance? So MPV is equal to, you have your standard price or cost per unit. So let's just put cost minus your actual cost multiplied by your actual units, kgs, liters, whatever you buy. So let's call it actual units. Uh, and we'll put in brackets for materials or rather component X basically, right? And in this case, it's at 28,000 Edwards. So if we put our formula, once again, we can just copy from above, it will be the same formula. Uh, the standard cost per unit, well, the reason I'm calculating the overall one is because you remember that the planning and operation must add up to the overall variance. So just to make sure that that adds up to 28,000 before we split it into planning and operational variances. So actual units, the actual materials would be in terms of the components, right? There's one unit of component X needed for each TV. And the total actual units above were the 750 and the 650. If we add these up, it will be basically 1,400 TVs were made in total. So the total materials component X would need it would be 750 plus 650 or 1,400. Because that's the total number of TVs we made and each TV requires one component. Standard cost is 60. Uh, due to a shortage of components in the marketplace, the market price went up for, went up to 85. But what would, Karadko actually paid 80. So actually paid, so 80 is the actual. So we can see 60 minus 18 to 1,400 gives us negative 28,000, which is our 
overall material price range. So we have our numbers down pat. Now we're gonna do the materials price planning variance and the materials price uh, operational variance. And the formula simply remember, whenever we have planning and operational variances, we have a third quantity, which is the revised quantity. So we have standard, we have actual, we have budgeted, and now we have revised. Let's use RV for revised. So in a planning variance, what do we do? In a planning variance, we replace the actual with the revised amount. So we're comparing the old standard cost, as above, we'll copy this as is, to the revised cost, what it should have been if we had properly been budgeting, and that will be multiplied by actual units per day. So this part of the formula will remain the same. So the revised cost was, the market price went up to 85 per unit for x, that's the third quantity given. So 85 over here, copy the formula. So the materials price planning variance is 35,000 adverse. And we'll put this in bold because this is the requirement. Likewise, we'll put the materials price operation variance in bold as well. We'll copy the formula. And for the materials price operational variance, we replace the old standard with the revised standard and compare that to the actual. So this part of the formula will remain identical, but the over here we'll now have the revised cost, and that will be the same 85 we used up here. So 7,000. And remember, the 30, minus 35,000 plus 7,000 should add up to the overall materials price variance, which was minus 28,000. So we're fine with this calculation as well. And that was just for two marks, so one mark for each. Finally, part three for five marks, labor rate variance and labor efficiency variance. So let's see what's the story now. Are we going to have one variance probably or two variances uh, that we need to calculate separately? Let's see. Each plasma TV uses two standard hours of labor and each LCD uses 1.5 uh, standard hours of labor. Okay, so that's separate labor hours done for each, let's read on. The standard cost for labor is $14 per hour, one standard cost, and this also reflects the actual cost per labor hour for the company's permanent staff in November. Okay, so there should be no labor rate variance for the permanent staff. Okay, so however, because of the increase in sales and production volumes in November, the company also had to use temporary labor at a higher cost of $18 per hour. So because of those temporary workers, there's a labor rate variance. No, this is the total labor variance, okay. The total capacity of Karadko's permanent workforce is 2,200 hours production per month, assuming full efficiency. In the month of November, the workforce were wholly efficient, taking exactly two hours to complete each plasma TV and exactly 1.5 hours to produce each LCD. The total labor variance therefore relates solely to the temporary workers who took twice as long as the permanent workers to complete this production. So basically the story here seems to be that the labor rate variance is purely because of the temporary workers and the labor efficiency variance again because the workforce was wholly uh, efficient is because of the temporary workers as well who took twice as long as the permanent workers. And if the permanent workers are taking two hours and 1.5 hours each, basically these guys are taking four and three hours each. So how do we go about this calculation? Well, if we break it down, we have the total capacity of the permanent workforce. Now keeping in mind, what do we need here? Let's put down our formulas. Labor rate variance, the formula is, you have your standard rate for labor, minus your actual rate, and you multiply this by the actual hours paid. And for the labor efficiency variance, our formula is basically our standard hours 
minus the actual hours worked. In this case, there's no idle time, so it doesn't matter. Hours worked, hours paid are the same. Multiply it by the standard rate. And this will be the same as this up here. Now we know that our standard cost of labor is 14 per hour. So this is 14 over here. We'll put our formula as well. We can copy paste it from above. And the actual rate is 18 for temporary workers, for regular workers it's 14. So because for regular workers it's 14, there's no variance there. We just need to calculate it for 18 over here. But the problem is we can't take the actual hours paid as 2,200 because that relates to the permanent workers and they were paid at the rate of 14, not 18, which we're using here. So we need to find out the hours that the temporary workers were paid. So this is something we need to calculate. And this would be the same as this above. As for the standard hours, well again, the labor efficiency variance is only because of the temporary workers as well. So we're gonna use their standard hours as well. Okay. So let's see how we'll go about this calculation based on the information that we have. Let's move this down and have our working up here. So right now we know that total capacity of permanent workforce workforce is it's just this here 2200 hours and they've been fully efficient. So they've been using two hours per uh, plasma TV and 1.5 hours per LCD TV. Oh, we have that as well, because we know the number of plasma TVs made and number of LCD TVs made. So we'll shift this down one row. Total hours needed to produce actual number of TVs. So we have 750 uh, plasma units, right? As we can see up here, 750 plasma units and 650 LCDs. Two for each plasma, 1.5 hours for each LCD. So 750 into two plus 650 into 1.5 so we need 2475 hours the permanent workforce did their work on time and they completed their 2200 hours they were fully efficient but we still need some extra time time needed from temporary workers is there for this minus this 275 hours now, it says the workers took twice as long as the permanent workers to complete the production. What does that mean? This is 275 hours worth of time based on the same logic that they're using two hours per plasma and 1.5 hours per LCD like the permanent workers. So in theory, they should only use 275, which means this is in theory the standard amount, right? This is the standard hours they should take uh, for the work, but they took twice as long. So actual time taken by the temporary workers is equal to twice as long, which is this multiplied by two, 550 hours. So that will be our actual hours in this case. And that gives us the labor efficiency and labor rate variances. And if we add these up, total 
labor variance. This is equal to this plus this negative 6050, which matches our answer over here. Okay, so let's break it down because this is quite a challenging calculation. The first question you might have is why are we just focusing on the temporary workers? Shouldn't we be focusing on all the workers? And yes, that's generally the case. But they specifically said that the permanent workers are not responsible for the variance, right? They said the total labor variance relates solely to the temporary workers. Even so, you'll say, well, in the labor rate variance, we took 550 hours paid, but we didn't just pay for 550 hours. We paid for the total, whatever, more than 2,200 hours for the permanent workers along with this 550 hours. So aren't we understating the variance? But keep in mind, for those 2,200 hours, we just paid 14. So for those 2,200 hours, if we were to do a separate calculation, 14 minus 14 into 2,200, that would be zero. This is just the temporary workers calculation. Since the permanent workers cal uh, variance is zero anyway, the total labor rate variance would remain the same, negative 2200. Likewise, same story for labor efficiency variance. For the labor efficiency variance for the permanent workers, it would still be 2200 standard minus 2200 actual, which will be zero. And that means their component of the labor efficiency variance would be zero and just the temporary component of the labor efficiency variance for temporary workers is this much, which is why we have our total variance as follows. So let's make these two bold, and that wraps up our calculation. So let's move on to our analysis. Now, we need to explain the reasons why Karadko would be interested in the materials price planning variance and the materials price operational variance. But the bad part is that, as we've seen in the questions, there's not really not much information for us to analyze. Yes, they mentioned they're in a highly competitive market and under pressure to reduce prices, we might be able to bring that in, but they're specifically asking for the materials price planning and operation variances, which is our standard analysis where we say price variance is uncontrollable, managers should not be judged based on that, operational variance is controllable, managers should be judged based on that, blah, blah, blah. But it's for nine marks. And this note two for materials price variance barely gives us any information. So what do we do in this case? You could occasionally get a question like this where there's a very small requirement, but they require that's for many marks and you might say well let's just write the key points and move on let's keep it short let's just mention what needs to be mentioned and yes that's the way you should go about it but the problem is if your answer is too short psychologically the market is going to think that you didn't write much even if you got all the good points there so what we're going to do is we're going to state our good points we're going to state our answer but we're gonna make a story out of it. Now, what do I mean by making a story out of it? I don't mean we're just gonna write for the sake of writing and elongate the answer just to make it seem longer, no. When we're usually writing an answer in the exam, we're concise and to the point because of time restrictions. Here, we're gonna milk it. We're gonna go in detail, explaining every point in detail and the various different repercussions. So, material price operation variance should be used to judge the manager's control and this is what we would find from it and so on and so for material planning where it should not be used and blah 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 we'll write a story about it okay so let's get into our answer so as always we're gonna start by we don't need to label the parts here but we'll still do it in any case just out of practice but we're gonna start with the standard point, which I've told you guys in the videos all the time. The standard point we have to write is, planning variances are based on uncontrollable factors. These variances cover factors which are outside the managers control. Therefore, the manager's performance should not be judged based on planning variances. 
right? And the other standard point is operational variances are based on controllable factors. These variances cover factors based on under, or factors under the manager's control. Therefore, based on the controllability principle, these variances should be used to assess the manager's performance, right? This is the standard point you have to mention in any analysis when it comes to planning and operational variances. Now we're gonna write the story. Specifically, they're asking, explain the reasons why Karad Co would be interested in the material price planning and operational variance. Karad Co would be interested in the materials price planning variance because it would give them further insight into any uncontrollable factors which cause the variance. This would help them understand what they missed out on when setting their standards and budgets, thereby enabling them to take these factors into consideration when setting future budgets and standards. Right, so what we're telling them is that, remember, planning variances caused by components that you should have accounted for in the budget, you didn't, so you made a re new revised budget or standard, and that tells you how much the planning variance is. So now that you know what these factors are, which cause this revised revision of the standard, next time you look into this beforehand to make sure you account for it. And this will give you a deeper insight, right? Additionally, The planning variance would also let them know how much of the variance is not as a result of the manager's actions. Uh, what was the planning variance in this case? It was 35,000 Edwards, right? So, for instance, the overall materials price variance was 28,000 Edwards. Let's keep this paragraph separate. This would suggest that the managers performed poorly. However, Seeing that the planning materials price variance was 35,000 35, adverse, Paradco would be able to see that the adverse variance is not the manager's fault. Rather, and therefore, they would not wrongly blame the manager for this, thereby avoiding demotivating the manager for something outside his control. Rather, Karadko will now realize that 
they need to look into why the market price change which was due to shortage of components seeing this they can now be aware about the potential shortages in the future and also take action such as finding alternative suppliers to prevent these issues from adversely impacting them in the future. Right? So we've really milked this point out in detail. But the story is effectively the same. What we're saying is uncontrollable factors, they shouldn't be blamed. And now we're just explaining everything point by point. Right? And then let's talk about the operational variance as well. In the same manner, the operational variance would allow Karadko to assess the manager's actual performance. This will enable them to evaluate whether he is performing well or poorly and they can then take appropriate appropriate action accordingly. Once again, we're milking this, so we'll go into detail about the appropriate action. If the performance is good, they could offer bonuses or other incentives to encourage more of the same. If it is poor, then they can take corrective measures to fix the problem, right? As we can see, the operational variance, it was 5, 000, no, 7,000 favorable. Operational materials price variance was 7,000 favorable. This was due to the fact that even though market prices rose from the expected $60 per unit to $85 per unit, the manager was still able to obtain the supply, the materials at $80 per unit. This means he performed well and was able to negotiate the price down with suppliers. Therefore, Karadko can take steps to reward and motivate him to continue performing in the same manner, right? And we can conclude by saying, it can be seen that had Karadko not obtained the planning and operational components of the variances of the materials price variance they would have blamed the manager 
for a poor performance even though he actually did well in the given circumstances this would have demotivated the manager and kept Karadko unaware about the problems relating to shortages of supply in the market right so we milked the standard points that we wrote here so our standard analysis will usually have stopped around here since they asked why Karadko was interested, we just milked the whole situation down and wrote all of this along with it as well. So notice how the analysis didn't take as much time. It took around 12, 13 minutes as compared to the overall calculation, which took a lot more time than this. So hopefully this will give you guys a good idea on how to do these questions. I hope this video benefited you guys and I'll see you guys next time.